Hey everybody, welcome back to Battle Ready Inc. So today's video, we're covering security control. Now this is the yellow hybrid security control variant, and we're also splashing in some rapid mon, all right? I think that these two combos, uh, or these two styles of deck really just go together perfectly. I know some people are separating the rapid mon into like its own separate thing, but really, just truly, I just really like Rapid Mon fitting in for the low end and then uh, the hybrid package and like that for the security control aspect of it. Uh, I think that just all meshes together perfectly. Don't forget our new memory marker this month is going to be Demi Vmon. This is handmade out of clay by my wife and painted as well. Super adorable. If you're playing some Imperial this format or some armors, like this is literally the best baby you could possibly have. Best memory marker for sure. Super uh, intricate, very, very detailed, amazing. Probably the best work she's ever done, honestly, for all the stuff we've had on the channel. Just kind of a culmination of all of her skills all in one. Now, you can find that on our Etsy store, link in the description below. There, you can also order any of our previous memory markers we've had on the channel, as well as some of our Battle Ready Ink merch. All right, so I've got the deck laid out here for you, uh, just kind of all, all in one. We are at 51 cards, but that's just because I want to talk about the Duo Tamer at the end. And, uh, and why I'm choosing not to play him, um, but I do have it in here just to at least talk about. So uh, we'll go ahead and do this card by card. First up, we're running five babies. Yes, we're running five, particularly because you actually like to promote up out of raising area with your rookies that you get, um, so that way you can use them for rapid mon. However, you do want to probably keep at least like one baby at the end, um, just because, you know, to use your like yellow options, that sort of thing. You always wanna make sure you have something yellow on field. Or just kind of like that one like Salomon waiting in the wings, either to swing, help swing for game, or to uh, you know get some much needed recovery. All right, and our first baby of choice here is going to be QP Mon. So when attacking, if you have five or more security cards, trigger draw one. Uh, like I said, we do a tremendous amount of recovery in this. This is security control, so you do typically do a lot of recovery. Uh, so getting yourself at five or more, especially early game, you know, really isn't that unheard of. So uh, I like that little bit of extra draw. Uh, our fifth one here is the Upamon, though. This is the draw one when attacking if you have three or fewer. Um, I just really like to, I mean, it, again, with as much recovery as we're doing here, getting ourselves, I mean, we have, what, eight different ways to recover in this deck. So being at five or more is pretty easy. So I think uh, QP Mon's a, a pretty solid one, um, especially because, like, firing these Rapid Mons off, you know, you can do those pretty quickly and then pretty early. Um, so, yeah, going with the QP Mon. And then first up is the Salomon, like we were talking about. This is our on deletion recovery. You know, just a good staple fallback. Really like it. Um, even evoing Rapid Mon on top of the Salomon is actually pretty awesome because if the Rapid Mon would get deleted, it just armor releases and then leaves your Salomon underneath it to then get on deletion effect uh, also. So good. Like, that actually combos pretty nicely because normally you wouldn't want to lose your Salomon uh, by Evoing on top of it. But with Rapid Mon, actually not a bad thing. Um, so I really like that. Uh, as a as a secondary, you notice we're only playing six uh, rookies in total. That's because we only have four uh, level fours that actually Evo on top of them. Uh, our ideal uh, Rapid Mon target, our Evo target, so is going to be Padamon. The Salamon is nice for that little bit of recovery, those late game swings, whatever the case may be. But Padamon here, uh, inheritable of your turn once per turn when an opponent's Digimon is deleted by dropping to zero DP, gain one memory. So you, uh, we're going to get into it, but Rapid Mon here, Evo's for four cost, um, but his effect minuses 5,000 DP on certain targets. Uh, so if you can use Rapid Mon to delete something, you'll trigger your Padamon to gain you in memory, essentially making this a three Evo uh, level four. So with a memory fixer on field, you know, you're in a really good position then. So three Evo cost Rapid Mon is where we're aiming for. So uh, the Digivolve on top of Terry Mon will not come into effect in this build. Uh, armor Purge, we already talked about it. It's really, uh, really awesome in this just because you can Armor Purge the Rapid Mon away when it gets deleted. And then it just leaves your rookie there. So you could Evo another Rapid Mon on top of that. Or if it's like a Salamon, you can still get your on deletion effect with Salamon as well. Um, so yeah, Armor armor Purge, you know, this Rapid Mon main Wind Digivolve ability is phenomenal for this deck and is the only reason we play it. But the Armor Purge actually has some pretty good synergy as well. Um, just a very powerful, like, game mechanic. 
Um, but when Digivolving, suspend one of your opponent's Digimon for each tamer you have in play. This is Yellow Hybrid. We have a ton of, of tamers, okay? That's not unheard of. Like, that's just our strategy. We get a lot of tamers. It's what we do. Um, then, uh, or then up to three of your opponent's Digimon, uh, opponent's suspended Digimon get minus 5,000 DP for the turn. So, minus 5 5k on three different suspended targets. Um, you can suspend them yourself if you have a lot of tamers, or if they already have all their stuff suspended, you know, you can still Evo into the Rapid one and get the minus 5,000 on three different targets. Um, I think that's also really nice is, um, the minus 5k on three different targets the three different targets isn't dependent on how many tamers if you only have two, two tamers you can still target three things to minus 5k the just the suspending part is what's uh strictly for how many tamers you have um but yeah so minus 5k this is like your new board wipe so we're, we don't we're run, we are not running the uh schwartz option card where it was like delete uh what was a level five or lower for every tamer you had uh we're not doing yellow or tamer or hybrid uh we're not running that instead we're running the rapid mon just because the rapid mon can be a little bit more aggressive it gets us a body on field to swing with uh it suspends targets that might be blockers or or anything like that because the uh the suspend target there's no level restriction you can suspend you know megas whatever you want with that um so getting those out of the way to then swing with for game so I like the multi-use out of Rapid Mon. You know, it's a, it's a body. It suspends things to get them out of your way. It can delete things. Minus 5,000 DP. Minus 5,000 DP. He's 6,000. You know, that anything 11,000, you're crashing into it. 10,000 or less, uh, you know, you're, then you're swinging over it. So uh, I, I really like the the versatility of this Rapid Mon. I think it's really, really powerful. So he can he can clear Megas is essentially what I'm kind of aiming at uh, with uh, stuff like Cody. Um, Cody in combination with Rapid Mon, we can clear Mass Daemon with a Rapid Mon. A single Rapid Mon can clear a Mass Daemon. Like that's how powerful this is. Uh, Schwartz can't do that. Okay, so Rapid Mon, the versatility is way more powerful than the Schwartz. Okay. So that's why we're going with a uh, rapid mon. Next, we're getting into our standard hybrid package. We got four of the Cosimon to Evo on top of our tamers. This is just a uh, you know our two different stair step methods here of getting into our Jet Sylphie Mon. Uh, we also got four of the Jet Sylphie Mon as well. If you Evo on top of Zoe, you get plus 3,000 DP on your Digimon. We actually have a decent amount of Digimon in this deck, so I do like actually like that a little bit more than previous yellow hybrid builds that we had um, that didn't have as many, I would say. Um, as many powerful ones, uh, I guess is a better way to put it. Uh, and then we got the four Jet Sylphie Mon. Like, we already know this card's inc incredible. If you played during BT7, you saw, like, this card probably a decent amount. Um, Evo for, for one if there's a Tamer in the source, which will... Pr usually be the case i will say um the the thing is with rapid mon we actually do have a level four that won't be a uh, a hybrid evoed on top of a tamer like you could in theory go uh, jet sylphie on top of rapid mon probably not the best because you're gonna lose your armor purge you're gonna lose whatever rookies underneath it and that sort of thing um so that's not the best. Also, you'd lose your win Digivolving effect if a card with hybrid and its trait is in this Digimon's Evolution cards recovery plus one. You know, you're going to lose that as well. So it's not ideal to Evo Jet Sylphie on Rapid Mon almost ever. But I guess the possibility is there. But still, uh, this is meant for your, your hybrids here. Hybrids go on top of your tamers and then up into Jet Sylphie. And then next we got Ophanimon. This is the new inclusion for this deck. Uh, this is what really makes the deck like vastly different, I would say, than what how we played it in BT7. And BT7 is a big debate about which mega should you run. You know, should you run the original Seraphimon or Kazuchimon or Shine Greymon or Dynasmon? You know, there's tons of debate. I think now the debate is over. Uh, for Evo cost, uh, when Digivolving, if this Digimon has a purple card in its Digivolution card, delete one of your opponents level four or lower Digimon. In this build, we will never trigger that, um, but mainly it's just if this uh, Digimon has a yellow card in its Digivolution cards, recovery plus one. So a, a lot of like those other ones that we saw in the past, that recovery plus one, um, we're seeing it again here. You're, you're Evoing into your Mega to get a recovery uh, one. So that's kind of like the same thing as that Seraphimon. This is but this is one more evo cost and it's a little bit more dp um but that's not why we play it that's not why it's in the deck um and even this next part on deletion you may play one purple or yellow level four or 
a lower Digimon card from your trash without paying its memory cost. That's actually pretty cool, uh, just being able to float. So if you, you've got lethal on board and your opponent needs to clear something, they can't target the Ophanimon because it just turns right back into another Digimon. So it doesn't actually uh, stave off any sort of attacks. Um, so I, I like that on deletion ability. It's a really nice um, bit of deterrent away from your opponent ever wanting to delete this just because it just gets to instantly replace itself either with one of the level fours that's in its evo stack or with like a rapid mon or one of your rookies for your rapid mon that didn't evo into on your turn so i love that versatility there um, but the big part is is that this is a purple level six why is purple level six important because we can run defeat again uh, you could have run defeat previously in all these other recovery builds the issue though was if you ever hard draw defeat it was just a straight up dead card for the rest of your game in hand uh, you could hard play it for 15 but i mean that's like a death sentence right there you would never <laughs> realistically want to do that uh, i think we did it a bit in like what bt6 format uh we would hard play some defeats every once in a while um but really it's a three evo cost on top of a funny mon so a uh, purple and a funny mon is treated as a purple also so we can if you hard draw this you can actually still evo into it now we do like i said a tremendous amount of recovery not just with the jet sylphie and the funny mon but like cards like tk and Zoe, like when you play those cards, it also, you know, you pull something out of security and the top deck goes into security. Uh, also, we have reinforced memory boost. We have tons of ways to get new cards into security. Okay, we pull out dead cards and we put in something uh, random and new. So we're playing Zwart at uh, Zwart defeat at four copies to increase the chances. The, every time this thing gets hit in security, it's like instant just like a tide changer absolutely you see him getting hit and you're like okay all right i'll probably win now <laughs> like literally it's kind of that powerful of a card it really is um so security play this card uh without battling um and without paying its memory cost so just keep that in mind it's without battling so the opponent gets to keep their digimon that swings into it uh when digivolving delete one of your opponent's tamers this i think this is a really good format for this uh it felt really good in tamer format as well, or in hybrid format with all those tamers. But the issue was there were so many tamers that even if you deleted one, it wasn't like that impactful. In this format, though, looking at decks that really need their memory fixers, uh, a big one is, um, oh, I'm, why am I drawing a blank on it now? Uh, Pyuldramon, right? The memory fixer, Davis, is so important. Pop that so they can't be at three. Then they can't hard play those Stingmons to DNA Digivolve with. Just constantly being able to uh, choke them is going to be very powerful. So being able to delete memory fixers is very good. Kind of the same thing with... Uh, um, Mass Daemon as well, just being able to delete those memory fixers, any sort of deck that's running a lot of memory fixers, um, being able to pop that and then choking them every single turn, that's like tons of value in that with Digivolving. And then we just have his regular old on deletion, delete one of your opponent's Digimon, no level restriction, no nothing. So that's uh, also a very powerful card. Uh, your opponent basically just never wants to delete him or block him or anything like that just because they don't want to risk him dying. Um, so then he just kind of gets free checks, free checks, free security checks, just turn after turn after turn because your opponent doesn't want to deal with him. So really liking uh, Zwart Defeat. So four copies, it feels very powerful. You don't have to run four. That's just like, I'm just a big fan of it. You could drop it down to two copies and then bump up your removal uh, option cards up to four copies each if you want, or if your budget doesn't allow for two defeats uh, or for four defeats and you can only get your hands on two. Um, but I think there's still good value like in two. Like two minimum, uh, four is like really, really aggressive. Um, so just kind of whatever you prefer. But I do recommend at least two copies if you can get your hands on two copies. Uh, next, I am running Susanomon. If you played Yellow Hybrid in the BT7 format, you know all about how easy it is to deck out <laughs> with this deck. So we run the Susano Mons in here, uh, Susano Mons, sorry, uh, literally just to put 10 cards back in our deck. Yes, he's a very powerful card. Uh, security attack plus two. If you saw the feature match, you saw how clutch he was. He came in just uh, like fist swinging and actually took the game. Um, 
you know, so he is still a powerful card. Security attack plus two when digivolving, delete one of your opponent's Digimon. You know, he's fantastic for those mid to late games where uh, when you're playing uh, security control, these games go on and on and on and on. So being able to fill your deck back up so you don't deck out, especially in the mirror match, that is so common in the mirror match. Uh, often games are won and lost because it's a race of... I need to win before I deck out because there's no way my opponent's going to deck out before me. So I have to start playing super aggressively and making bad plays, trying to like desperately win before I deck out. Um, so yeah, Susano Mons, just to prevent that is very, very important. I am running two um, because if it does get hit in security or something like that, uh, I need to be able to get a second copy, hopefully. So uh, that's why we're running the Susano Mons. Uh, even if you have to target him with a TK and pull him out with a TK, sometimes you just have to make that play, and you have to do that. Uh, that's just how it is. Uh, yep, so uh, still a fantastic card. Not not our game-winning card or anything like that. He's just he's literally here for the mirror match, honestly, as sad as that is, but it, it, is, it is what it is. Next, we got Reinforced Memory Boost. We already know how powerful of a card this is. There's a reason it's limited to one copy, uh, especially if you're going to be running four defeats. The just... The power of this card goes up even more once there's that many targets of defeat potentially in the deck to hit off of this. Being able to just like throw that in there and your opponent's like, crap. Uh, I either don't swing it all for a while um, and build up a big board or I go ahead and just trigger it as soon as possible, get it on field and then try to delete it and then just have to eat that uh, deletion uh, effect. So this is just a very powerful card when you have cards like defeat. Also, we have a very large number of removal option cards. So uh, six in total. So being able, I mean, that's 10 cards out of our deck there. So that's a decent chance of being able to throw one of those in there, even throwing in a tamer to get a free tamer on field. Uh, like there's some fantastic targets in this deck for this uh, reinforcement reboot. Boost. And then those big turns when you need that big push at the end, like with the Susano Mons, you know, you got your memory fixer and then like maybe a gain one off of like a Cody. And then you just pop this reinforced memory boost. Now you're up to seven. Now you can go into Susano Mon, uh, you know, if, if that comes up. But he, it's just a really powerful card either way. Next, we got uh, three Wyvern's Breath. Um, one of your opponent's Digimon gets minus 15,000 DP for the turn and activates in security. It's security control. We want this card in security. We want our other card we're about to talk to in security. We just want these to trigger for free. We don't want to have to hard play them for eight cost. We just like for the opponent to hit them and let us play them for free. And that's kind of the, the whole theme of security control, if you're not aware. Um, but the particularly why we went with Wyvern's Breath is just because of the format. Um, there's a lot of stuff that can't be affected or deleted, that sort of thing. But the Wyvern's Breath gets around a lot of that. Uh, I think the only thing in the format that Wyvern's Breath isn't going to be able to touch is going to be a Doru Greymon, that its wind digivolving effect will make it, you know, uh, impervious to Wyvern's Breath. Um, but to get good value out of that Doru Greymon, they have to essentially be at six memory, right? Um, because that's three Evo into the Doru Greymon. And then if they also want to then go into a mega and then get like some good value out of that turn, you know, they need six memory for that. That's a big, big ask, no matter what the deck is. So sometimes you might see them just even to the door of Greymon just to pass turn, which will keep it alive on the until their next turn. Um, but when they swing in uh, security and hit this in security on that next turn, you know, that, that effect is going to be gone. So Wyvern's Breath then will be able to take into effect. So I really like Wyvern's Breath. I did have it at a four of, and then Chaos uh, Degrade at two, but I think a three and three spread feels pretty all right for right now, particularly because I know X Antibody will be a very, very uh, heavily played deck this format. So Chaos De Degradation here can actually dodge that entirely. It, this one dodges every game mechanic so far that can prevent your Digimon from getting removed off to the field, whether it goes bottom deck, trash, hand, you know, whatever the case may be. This one dodges all those kind of effects because this one placed one of your opponent's Digimon face down at the top or bottom of your opponent's security stack. So there's nothing that in this game so far that prevents that from happening. So uh, this is a fantastic removal card. 
uh, and if you do trash the top card of your opponent's security stack, the idea is you'll always want to place whatever whatever that card is. You want to place it on the bottom and then trash the top card. Trashing the unknown is so much more important. Um, it could be like a hammer spark or like a removal option if you're playing in the mirror match. It could be like a defeat, something like that. Um, so being able to just bottom deck a card you know and then trashing the, the top card, which is an unknown. Because say you do that and then you swing in, you know, not maybe not in this particular build, but you swing in with like, you know, security attack plus one plus two and you don't hit that really big digimon until the very last card which at that point it's okay for your mega to get deleted because some then something else is going to swing in for game right the little thing you need that final swing in so it's okay if whatever gets deleted in that final swing because there's no more security after that so it's okay now the security effect isn't quite as nice it is uh you may place one of your opponent's digimon face down at the top uh, or bottom of its owner security stack uh, you don't get it to get that trash so it is like giving your opponent a little bit of recovery which is kind of a bummer but again this dodges all that it is still a removal option card it's still a pretty solid card even with that a uh, little bit of a drawback it still does remove something uh, very formidable potentially off field uh, so yeah, three of that as well. And that is our removal options for the deck. It honestly, it feels a little light compared to how we have been in previous formats. Um, but again, we we're just doing recovery. And the point is just to recover, not not so much to just have nothing but options in security, um, but to have like tamers in security, to have defeats in security. So we're not just focusing on only removal options, trying to get those recovered in security. We're doing multiple different things in security. Next is our tamer package here. I'm going with three TK. This felt really good last format. I'm going to stick with it for this one as well. Uh, it's our one of our memory fixers. We actually have a new one for this format, uh, but being able to play it and then pull some Something yellow out of security and then uh, recovery so again this just cycles out all the bad cards out of uh security and then has a chance of putting in better cards in security and then with bringing back the yellow rookies this format uh our tks are less likely to just whiff on hitting a yellow and have to take something else uh you know we have a much higher chance of actually hitting yellow in security off a of tk this format so uh yeah still rock rocking the three of um just because i think he's a fantastic card good memory fixer really works uh, strong in this deck being able to pull out all those cards to replace them with something else that's kind of the same thing we're going with for Zoe here. So it's a three play cost, um, but on play, you can add a hybrid or 10 warriors in its trait uh, from your security to your hand and then recover. So that's that's going to be a little bit more limited. That's just going to pull out uh, our hybrids here. That's going to be our only targets that we're going to be pulling out of security. But either way, it does give us a peek at our security. So even if there's not a target for us to take out, we at least can see what it is. So it's unlike TK, which are mandatory to take out something no matter what. Zoe at least just kind of you know a little check you know see what we're working with all right we got some really good powerful removal options we got a, a Zwart defeat in there security looking very very nice so I'm not gonna worry about it uh, doing that but if you're like oh crap okay uh, no hybrids in here but also I've got like uh, four Patamons and a Salamon in here. I need to get these out of here ASAP or get like massive recovery as soon as possible. So that's what's also good about Zoe. Uh, next is Kari, which is uh, a new form or a new card we have. This is another memory fixer, but also your turn when a card is added to your security stack, you may suspend this tamer to gain one memory. That's not just recovery, mind you. Okay, that's any time a card is added. So Jet Sylphimon will trigger that. Ophanimon will trigger that. Uh, in the mirror match, uh, Chaos Degregation will trigger that. Uh, Reinforced Memory Boost will trigger that. TK will trigger that if you're you know doing a recovery off of uh, grabbing the yellow. Zoe will trigger that. That's a lot of cards in this deck that'll trigger this Kari. That's fantastic. That's like free memory right there. So really liking that. Uh, keeping her on field. She's going to be like kind of your permanent memory fixer. Whereas TK, once TK hits the field, in the past you didn't really want to Eve on top of him because he's your memory fixer, right? Uh, and then sometimes you might not want to play a second TK because you know there's probably nothing good in there for you or nothing you want to take out of security. Um, so now you can play the Kari and then you can Evo your hybrids on top of your 
TK. So that's pretty cool. Just getting that uh, nice new change uh, for sure. So being able to get recurring value off of the Kari turn after turn, whereas the TK only gives you that return one time, and then he's just a flat memory fixer after that. So Kari, a little bit better, um, I think, but TK is still very pivotal for the overall strategy, especially early on. You want to draw into a TK as much as possible. Uh, next, we got Cody, and this, honestly, I keep forgetting how good Cody is for multiple reasons. So start of your main phase. Now remember, main phase is not the start of your turn. You have your what unsuspend phase, your draw phase, your raising phase, so you can promote up something out of raising area, especially if you know you have a Cody on field and you've got that yellow uh, rookie that you can promote up, promote that rookie up to gain your Cody, uh, to gain you one memory. Uh, so as long as you have a yellow Digimon in play, gain one memory. So I, I, I love this. Cody is fantastic for getting you a little bit of extra memory. Memory Fixer puts you at three. Cody's going to put you to four. Uh, you can go Rapid Mod for four on that. Uh, you know, there's lots of different things that you can do, which is what I was talking about earlier. Reinforce Memory Boost and a Cody and a Memory Fixer. That's seven. That's instant uh, Susano Mon value right there. Lots of different synergy going on. Uh, even with uh, like Ofani Mon being a four cost Evo, you can Evo your Ofani Mon and uh, your Cody here will have you at four memory with that Memory Fixer. So like really good synergy there. That extra bit of memory is actually pretty pivotal in this deck. Being at four is actually a little bit more necessary than you actually kind of maybe you initially realized um, so fantastic card but it doesn't stop there your turn when one of your digimon with two or more colors attacks you may suspend this tamer to give one of your digimon one of your opponent's digimon minus 2000 dp for the turn um so originally i wasn't really running cody i was running the duo tamer because the duo tamer has the same similar ability but it's when one of your yellow digimon attacks you may suspend this tamer to have one of your opponent's digimon minus 1000 dp for the turn so I was like, oh yeah, minus 1,000 DP, like combine that with Rapid Mon. So Rapid Mon will go mi minus 5K and then swing over something, you know, that's killing anything 11,000 DP. But if I go Duo Tamer, I can go 12,000, you know, it, it like adds up. I can clear bigger and bigger things. Um, but Cody is just even better because Cody is minus 2K. And really, the only time I ever want to do that DP minus is when I'm doing the Rapid Mon combo. So if I'm going Rapid Mon here, um, then it just makes more sense to run Cody to combo with Rapid Mon rather than running the Duo Tamer to combo with Rapid Mon just because Cody's going to minus 2K uh, instead of 1K. Um, also, the Cody giving you that one extra memory uh, guaranteed, as long as you have a yellow on field, combos great with Rapid Mon. So it just it makes more sense, whereas the Duo Tamer is going to get you that extra memory. Sometimes it's not really in your control. With Cody, it's like a guaranteed. It's like, okay, I'm going to promote up this Patamon. Cody's going to give me the extra memory. Now I'm at 4. Now I can go Rapid Mon. You know, it just it makes so much more sense to run Cody. I think Cody particularly combos better because I'm playing Rapid Mon specifically. If I wasn't playing the Rapid Mon package, I would probably actually would cut Cody in favor of the TK and Kari. But as long as I'm playing Rapid Mon, I'm playing Cody as well. So that was just my why I wanted to keep the TK and Kari in here is just to mention uh, because it's either Cody or or the Duo Tamer. Just if you're running Rapid Mon or not. If you're running Rapid Mon, stick with Cody. Um, and for those that aren't aware, start of your turn, if you have fewer security cards than your opponent, gain two memory. Uh, I've been in plenty of games where that's really difficult to trigger sometimes, uh, especially like we're running QP Mon. So the idea is to just like Evo into these recoveries and be at, put yourself at six, seven security. Like that's really difficult to trigger your duo tamers. Now, when it does pop off, it's a good come from behind. If you're just absolutely getting slaughtered, it's a great card uh, to help get you back into the game. Um, but I think the Cody is just gonna like prov like get you there anyways. Honestly. He's going to be able to, you know, do the job uh, just more often. Like every single turn, I can get value off of Cody, uh, whether I'm winning or losing. But it, with TK and Kari, you know, that's not the case. You have to be losing essentially to get value out of them. So Cody is just the new, newer, better uh, choice in general, I think. Now this uh, tamer ratio might feel a little low just at a glance, um, but if you actually think about it compared to last format, uh, we were running. Uh, what was it? three of the TK, the Memory Fixer TKs, four Zoe's, and uh, four of the Duo Tamers. And so that came out to be, uh, was it 11 
tamers, and that's exactly what we're running here. So we're actually still running the same amount of tamers as we were, were last format, which is plenty. 11 tamers, and you've only got four, <laughs> four yellow hybrids, okay? Like level four hybrids. You're fine. 11 tamers to go along with those. That's plenty i think that that'll get you there and again like even even then the, this isn't even the main part of the deck like this is just a small bracket of the deck we still have our rapid mons and our rookies we have our uh, zwart defeats putting in work for us and then the susano mons you know there's great value um or or great things that you can do with this deck that isn't just i have to go into yellow hybrids to win i have to go into yellow hybrids to win no that's just one piece of the the massive part of this deck this whole deck it's like four different sections of what it's got going on and like just evoing your yellow hybrids on top of tamers it's just a tiny fraction of it so you don't need to go like super ham with 15 tamers in this deck it's just not needed i don't think so that's just my personal opinion so uh if you feel otherwise definitely put it in the comments section below what you're thinking instead